and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on for some Naya Feather. That's right, I am finally playing Naya Feather. This is a deck that is a very popular request that uh, people have wanted to see me play, and I haven't yet. This is the first time playing uh, Feather the Redeemed with Season of Growth. I've never played a Season of Growth deck before, so this will be pretty interesting trying out um, Season of Growth here. And whenever I play against Naya Feather, especially with this card, it always looks really impressive from from my side and I'm just like looking at my cards and just thinking there's no way that I'm beating this season of growth and and uh, infinite God's willings and reckless rages and stuff like that so I'm gonna give it a try over on the other side if people want to see me play this deck so let's uh let's also get some better basic planes than these three ugly ones let's do that too um, so I want to do basic lands sorry for i missed that let's get these ones so we need three of them one two three so yeah let's let's give this a try this is a, a pretty a pretty popular deck it's not like it's not all over the place but it looks pretty good at every time i'm playing against it um as y'all know with feather the redeemed you know what we're trying to do is get get these creatures out feather arcanist and 10th district legionnaire and protect them with god's willing and just uh, beat our opponent down with them. Um, and yeah, it, it's so much card advantage, so much scrying uh, with all of these things, with the Legionnaire also letting us scry, the Defiant Strikes drawing you a whole lot of cards. Um, but yeah, let's let's give this a try. Sideboard-wise, you know, we got like Honor Guards for the blue-green decks with Risen Reef, um, we got Gideons and Adanto Vanguards against more controlling decks. We got the Flame Sweeps for the Zombie Hordes that are coming in. Healing Grace is just amazing against Red. Um, yeah, let's give this a try. So Naya Feather, and this is this is certainly a a good proven deck here. Um, you know, this isn't just like a a brew that I'm trying out. So I'm gonna go ahead and play it over in ranked. So you see here with the the R next to it here. Um, and I'll probably, I may play some of these other decks in rank today too. We'll see. <laughs> Season of Growth is the most amazing thing ever. It is, it is pretty crazy, the card advantage it provides. Yeah, that is, that is true. That's a good point that whenever you do have Season of Growth on the battlefield, you don't really mind losing a feather because you're going to find another one. I don't imagine this is a keep. The London Mulligan rule probably really helps out Feathered X2. Come to think of it. Whenever you have a card like Feather, that's just so important. I'm not sure which one of these two I want to get rid of. 10th District Legionnaire or Arcanist. I think it's Legionnaire. You think it's Arcanist? Legionnaire is better when you have Feather. Okay. I'll trust y'all. <clears throat> I mean, we could just keep the Arcanist also. We just have them all.
We can have it all. <clears throat> yeah, well, if yeah, like if, if we get to the point where we have feather and play and we're casting spells, like we're we're gonna be fine. So we don't have to worry about them not hitting the graveyard for the arcanist at that point. I'm worried about whenever we don't have that going on. More so. So Arcanus is going to be a better blocker for me, which is exactly what I want right now. Thanks, Lucas. Yeah, glad you like the Kalia and Friends deck. I think I'm going to be playing that deck again tomorrow. All right, well, I can bluff having a God's Willing or something like that. You know, I can bluff a God's Willing here. Oh, that's good. Getting another Divine Strike. That's good. All right. I like where we're at. So basically made the blocking there because if I, you know, if I don't block, then we're going to be taking a whole lot of damage. Okay. I don't like, I don't like where we're at anymore. <laughs> The double Vyashino Pyromancer. Never mind, don't like where we're at anymore. Hey, what's up, Starman? Thanks for the positivity and great content, Todd. Aw, you're welcome, Starman. And thanks for that continued support. I really appreciate that. Sixth subscriber on the day already, even with not doing so well. All right, Steamkin runs away with it. That's what Steamkin does. Hey, Vox Mortis. Good evening. 
All right, get these coils in here. Healing grace, absolutely. Sheltering light, yes, please. Uh, Night of Autumn. I'm not sure about Flame Sweep for this matchup. You know, it, it can be good if they draw a bunch of like the little creatures. Is this is this a wreck? Rage matchup? I suppose it probably is. And now I'm cutting Collision Colossus. Yeah, we can go to Kotli. Takali's not doing very much here. You know, like Viachino Pyromancer are the main thing because, like, Chain Whirler trigger doesn't really do anything. It's one damage, it's not a big deal. So it's it's basically like the Viachino Pyromancer. I I don't think I'm going to play Takali. I think I'd rather have like some of these other things. I'm going to trim a Season of Growth. Um, I don't... Let's see. Let's get rid of the Samet Sprint. I don't really know what the other two cards I'm supposed to take out here are. Do I just take out all the Season of Growth? Do I just get rid of two Dreadhorde Arcanists? Or a couple Legionnaires? Legionnaires can get so big, though. Like, that's that's certainly good. I think it's just Arcanist. Honestly, I don't really know. I'll trim one Season of Growth and one Arcanist. It's it's kind of hard to turn on like the Gideon lifelink, you know, like the games that we lose are going to be kind of games like that, like we're on the back foot and we don't get to start really attacking. You cut the seasons. Yeah, um, I I like Thrash Threat a ton. I, I've i definitely been on record of liking Thrash Threat more than Domri's Ambush before. But I think when you're playing Dreadhorde Arcanist, it kind of changes. I think that that counter on the Dreadhorde Arcanist is very valuable. And honestly, I've, I've I've been just pretty impressed with uh, with Domri's ambush just in general. So them having lightning strike and fry here, I just won't even play a creature. Just let them lightning strike and. Over green mana. The card selection is pretty incredible. Wow, that was a really bad frenzy turn for them.
That was a really bad frenzy turn for them. Green mana. Not green mana. Um, could just use this, the God's willing to scry a couple more times. Yeah, might as well. That's actually just fine. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, there's only nine green sources in here, and I, I was definitely questioning if nine was going to be enough. Not so sure about that. All right, I'm going to give her that other season of growth for a flame sweep. But this is... <clears throat> Uh, one of the lists found online had this, and with all the scry, I thought, all right, well, maybe that's that's all you need with all the scry that this, that this deck has. Um, I mean, this hand's awesome if I survive till like turn four, you know, like get to play feather with God's willing, and then have some reckless rages and stuff. Like, if my opponent has a really fast start, this could be bad. I'm gonna keep it though because they they're taking a mulligan. If they kept their seven, I would be kind of skeptical here, but they're going to down to six, so I'll go ahead and give this a try. Thanks, Loki. All right, so they're down to five. This is the game for green mana, I guess. We've drawn over half of our green lands already. Uh, they have one land. Nah, can't be worth it. I was like, they have one land, they can't kill a feather, but if they just draw a second land and then use fry or whatever, it can't be worth it. I'm not under that fast of a clock. I wasn't gonna block anyway because of um, Wizard's Lightning. So it's like, what's the point? Yeah, this is looking good for us. I can't can't imagine our opponent wins from here. But we'll see. All right. Yeah, I guess I should have played that on second main. It's 
good point. I need to start setting second main stops for Feather so I can get the cards back at end step instead of end step where I have to wait till the next end step. Ugh. Yeah, that was real unfortunate for our opponent with five card hand, no lands basically. Hey, track team. Day's going good. Oh, uh, we just... We just drew lots of lands all the time with mono black control. Just lots of flooding out. Being on the draw is rough. So my opponent would not attack with the Legion Lieutenant. They would be more scared. But I certainly think my opponent has uh, instant speed removal, whether it's cast down or mortify, something like that. I could Defiant Strike now to try to draw a land. Sounds reasonable. I could also Domri's. No, I don't want Domri's ambush. I just want to try to draw a land. I want to have both their protection spells available. It's interesting. I could draw a lot of cards. Not sure if a lot of cards is what I really need, though. There we go. That's a good card. Don't need that. Yeah, I'll take that.
All right, so we'll have Feather, play Feather, then Reckless Rage, kill the Lieutenant. I mean, I guess I should just be targeting the Legionnaire. Yeah, I should just be targeting. There's no reason not to target the Legionnaire here. All right, that's my bad. Yeah, God's Willing is a pretty sweet card. That's a good one for sure. The last time we had a deck like this in Standard with Heroic, God's Willing was a huge part of it. Well, I'd rather have Sheltering Light than Salmon Sprint in this matchup. Is there anything else I really want to be doing, though? I mean, I don't love Spellbreaker. Can we get away with just the 12 creatures? If I, can I cut, like, Spellbreakers for Lava Coils, Flame Sweep? Yeah, I guess Takali does stop Champion of Dusk, but I don't know if that's really worth it for a card. It's probably one Flame Sweep, two Coil. All right, let's give this a try instead of the Spellbreakers. I don't want to see Soren. Basically doing the exact same thing we just did the last game. Double duress, huh? Whoa. I was not expecting that. I mean, just look at these cards in our hand. That is not... Have Defiant Strike, Domer's Ambush. Now I can re I can attack and recast Domer's Ambush. Now, all right. Rank up. Gems. <laughs> Turns out tier one decks make you rank up. Who would have thought? Yeah. 
deck has, is a little more consistent than our mono black control deck. A little more consistent there. Mono black control is still cooler though. All right, I'm gonna get rid of one of these creatures. I think the Arcanist. Yeah, I'm gonna get rid of the Arcanist. I guess we already kind of talked about this before that I guess whenever we have these three, keep Legionnaire. But you know, we have the turn two season of growth. This will be my first time playing this sweet card. Get some scry and some card draw in here. Yeah, and I think I'm just going to go straight for Feather next turn, I think. I guess Legionnaire, Samit, Sprint. That does draw a lot of cards and hit really hard. I mean, we can go Defiant Strike and really draw a lot. Because next turn I could do Feather, Sprint. I guess if I want to go Legionnaire Strike here. Ooh, Arcanist Samus brand is pretty nice. Because, yeah, like, you know, they're whatever ramp deck. I want to try to kill them quickly. Omnath is cute. Hmm. We only had one more mana. I guess I guess I can Defiant Strike and look for mana, but then I can't. So let's see, because I want to go Arcanist, Sprint, and Rage. I want to Sprint the Arcanist. So this should probably still work. Oh God, that just kills people. Perfect. I'll take that one too. Just so much card draw. <laughs> yeah, that was really gross. Our opponent had turn three Omnath and they were dead. They're just straight up dead. Alright, so it's Kali Honor Guard, obviously. Coming out, coming on in here. Yeah, definitely Takali Honor Guard. Don't know about anything else. And I guess Sheltering Light, not so valuable here. And they, I guess they'll have like Red Removal. They'll have like Fry. Yeah, they're, they're probably going to try to fry some stuff. I think I want to cut Spellbreaker like always. Not so sure about these spellbreakers. I 
<laughs> yeah, that black white land destruction deck was was really sweet from yesterday. Oh, good good call. I need to change that asterisk. Good call. Good call. We are currently on Naya Feather right now. That's our deck we're playing right now. This hand's nothing special. Maybe we draw a Season of Growth right here. Darn. Shifting Ceratops, huh? Not a good card against Reckless Rage. Yeah, I'll be playing the Orzhov Vampires again at some point. And day could be, could be going better. It's real sad about um, flooding out all the time with the mono black control a little bit ago. But, oh well. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now that's a card. Plans kind of changed with seeing that. I wanted. I was. I was actually planning on um, having Reckless Rage kill this Leafkin Druid, but with seeing the Feather there, I want to keep the Reckless Rage in the graveyard to be able to get back next turn after we play Feather. All right, three now. So yeah, it's kind of up to you, Plumber, if you want to wait until rotation to build a deck or, or uh, get cards now. Um, we are about seven weeks from rotation. So that is still, a, you know, that still is a long time. So if you're going to, like, build a deck and you're going to enjoy it for the next seven weeks and everything, you shouldn't feel so bad about, um, you know, like, cards that are rotating out. Because, you know, seven weeks is... That's still a lot of games of Magic that you can play and uh, get better and, and all that kind of stuff and you know have fun and all that kind of stuff. So I, I don't I don't think that you necessarily have to uh, completely shy away from cards that are rotating out. Um, but you know just just realize it's like a it's like a a seven week thing, basically. Um, okay, so this looks like a 
Looks like Scape Shift. And I think actually playing Arcanist is faster for us than playing Legionnaire, even though we don't get that two damage in because we can like double Defiant Strike the next turn. I'm looking for Colossus. That's the card I want to see more than any other. The uh, get the pump and trample, and then yeah, like the cards you'll still be able to use the cards for the historic format, which will definitely be a thing. And decks are going to be. You know, the whole format's just going to change a whole lot at rotation also. Um, there's not, like, something specific to invest in right now that's going to be great after rotation because we just don't know what that's going to necessarily look like. Seven, eight. Mm. It's not bad. It's not great, though. So looking for Colossus. Sam at Sprint would be another good one. It's not bad. <clears throat> not great. Wars off the was a lot of fun. It's it's definitely a janky deck, but it's fun to play. Um, made a couple of changes at the end of the video too. If you check out the YouTube video, made a couple of changes. Uh, that, like, we took out, like, took out, like, the three mana Kaya that I think could make it a little better. But, yeah, I like, I like the Orzhov Thran deck. <laughs> no, I don't have any kids, no ceilings. Uh, Three-year-old opened, opened a macaroni and cheese powder package and threw it all over the room. Just got done calmly telling her that that was a bad idea. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Glad you're able to stay calm. There. Um, okay. So we're going to want flame sweeps for zombies and Night of Autumns. I don't want sheltering, light, a reckless rage, really even Domri's ambush. I guess maybe I should just play Domri's ambush for the other two cards. I don't think I really want Gideon. I guess Honor Guard stops these Elvish Rejuvenators from doing stuff. I'm going to play Ambushes. I guess they do have Krasis also. Yeah, we'll play the Ambushes. Chandra Tribal. We did pretty good with that deck. I struggled with 
very big creatures. And so we got some more removal in afterwards. Because as you all know, at the end of videos, I always like uh, make upgrades to the deck. So I hope I hope you all are certainly checking those out. But um, but yeah, so we tried to fix that hole. I think the Dire Fleet Daredevils in the sideboard were unnecessary. Here is Sacred Foundry. Getting rid of Sacred Foundry allows me to play Temple of Triumph. Because I want I need I need green on turn two for season of growth. I guess I don't need to play season of growth on turn two. I guess I can play Legionnaire. Do I need multiple Legionnaires? Probably not, right? Okay. You go to the end sometimes first to see the changes and then think about how well they would have worked when you then you go back watch the games and see how the changes would have worked. Okay. That's interesting. All right, well, I guess the answer is yes towards Season of Growth first. Playing Legionnaire doesn't do anything here. Very strong hand for the opponent. But if they have a Scape Shift to follow this up, that is. Yeah, I'm sitting with my two lands. They have seven. It's pretty crazy. So I'm going to keep Flame Sweep because of like a Scape Shift where we're going to want to kill stuff. That's really bad for my Legionnaire though. Basically just playing this to try to get the Scry. We got to find... We got to find spells. Gotta find spells. Um, I I don't know what the best deck to play at the MCQ is. I think that I think the answer to that question is different for everybody. Different people's play styles and all that kind of stuff. A budget hundred dollar deck that's two color and easy to learn. Um, as far as like a, like, you know, paper, paper prices and arena prices are going to be different there. I'm not even winning this game, like even with flame sweeping here, right? Guess I might as well try. I was debating whether or not to to show them flame sweep or not. Um. 
But yeah, yeah, Selesnya tokens, Simic Flash, Boros Feather, uh, White Black Vampires is probably the best out of all those. Those are all good options. Okay, talking about in paper. Okay. Um, like those are those would all be like you know hundred dollars less on on arena, but in paper, I guess I'm, I'm not too familiar with paper prices to be honest. Um, yeah, I'm not I'm not super familiar with paper prices. I just play I play arena every day. I think I'd rather have Honor Guard. <clears throat> you know, watching how that plays out. I think I'd rather have Honor Guard than Night of Autumn. Um, we didn't see the enchantment removal from them, but we do have like the God's Buildings also. I think I'm not going to worry about the enchantment removal as much. And... Gosh, these hands are just awful. Guess I try this. I still have like pump spells and stuff in the deck, right? Like I didn't take them all out. We didn't see any last game. We haven't seen any of this game yet, but pretty sure we still have spells. It's just it's only just lands and creatures. That's all we've said. No feel of the dead, no feel of the dead, no feel of the dead. Just get something else. It's just always feel to the dead. Darn. Yay. A spell. Yay. Um. I go Legionnaire. Oh, right. Dreadhorde Darkness isn't doing anything with Feather and Play. That's right. Still worth attacking with it, though. Yeah, so it's... Again, I just, I just answered that same question basically a little bit ago. Um... There are seven weeks until rotation, so I mean, it's I can't really tell you whether like sp spend your stuff right now or um, wait seven weeks. I mean, you you say you're you're bored of your deck that you have, and you want a new deck. I mean, it is it is seven weeks. Like that's a that's a long time to be playing a new deck, even though stuff will rotate. So that's just a decision you have to make. Um, you know, like. If uh, if you want to use your wild cards, especially like I say you, if you're just free to play, um, you know, just realize that if if you do use your wild cards now, you may not have wild cards for a deck, you know, after rotation, because you will need a new deck after rotation. Just basically, I guess to say that, like, you will need a new deck after rotation. 
yeah it's like seven weeks away it's like the end of end of september and we're at the beginning of august uh arena commander is probably never going to be a thing i'd be surprised if arena commander is ever a thing so there's no no eta i don't i don't think that will ever be a thing uh, unless unless you're talking about brawl if you're talking about brawl that's brawl's a thing That's something different, I guess. I don't know. Maybe maybe you're considering Arena Commander. Maybe you're talking about Brawl when you say Arena Commander. Hey Templar, but we don't know exactly when Brawl is going to hit. Some sometime after the Throne of Eldraine. Time wipe? Okay, I'll be honest. I was not expecting time wipe at all. And obviously, I didn't play around time wipe at all. I haven't seen a, a sweeper like that from that deck before. That's my first time seeing. Seeing a sweeper. I, I felt really good about this game until that time wipe. I I just didn't know that time wipe was a card that, that this deck plays at all. And I, I could have, you know, played around it better than what I did, certainly. And I could have sideboarded better. Like, I would have definitely had Sheltering Light in my deck if I knew that they had Time Wipe. I just didn't. So that's, that's like, something to learn, you know, if you're playing this deck. Like, keep Sheltering Lights in against uh, in this matchup. Stop. I just want to look at my library. See if I've bottomed anything. Uh... Seriously? Okay, just a spellbreaker.
All right, three and one. Yeah, the the list that I'm playing here is was like a five zero list. I only changed one one card in the main deck that I really didn't like, but I I could definitely see playing Blood Suns in the sideboard. I'm I'm all for that. Uh, there weren't any Blood Suns in the sideboard, and so I wasn't sure if this deck needed Blood Suns. But yeah, I'm all for playing Blood Suns in this this deck. I don't. I don't think that my deck is too slow to deal with Scape Shift right now. I don't. I don't. I want to think that that's that's the case. I mean, we won game one very easily. Uh, game two, my hand was just horrendous. I didn't have any pump spells at all, and it was just very bad. And game three, there I got blown out by a time wipe that I just didn't know was in their deck, and could have definitely played differently and sideboarded differently if I knew time wipe was available. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that that. Um. I wouldn't necessarily say this deck's too slow for escape shift. Escape shift's not always going to have that kind of hand they had there too with the Ajani's welcome and everything. Um, do need to draw another white source here, but yeah, the the flame the flame sweeps didn't seem like like it the flame sweeps in the sideboard felt like that's the wrong way to approach the matchup you know like those games two and three i was sitting with a flame sweep forever and by the time by the time the game gets to the point where you want to flame sweep um like at at that point like it's it's already pretty tough to win because they by that point like scape shift gets to rebuild you know, every single turn. And so... I think that playing Blood Sun instead of Flame Sweep is, is just a, a better thing to be doing. Like, if in games two and three, if those were Blood Suns in my hand, not Flame Sweeps, like, I really like my cho my chances there. So Season of Growth is the better card to play right now if we draw a land. If we don't draw a land, we'd rather have the Legionnaire in play. Guess we can't really rely on drawing a land. Yeah, with Flame Sweep, yeah, that is correct. You do have to finish the game immediately with Flame Sweep. All right. Well, wish wish I would have played Season of Growth. There's a card that says destroy target land. Two target creatures can't block for four mana that I've seen in Feather sideboards. That card is is just so much worse than Blood Sun, it's laughable. There is no reason to play that card ever. I would have four Blood Suns and I would be playing four Alpine Moons before I'd even think about touching that card. Alright, no lands for us. But we're going to do the same thing we did against Vampires earlier. We're going to cut the Spellbreakers, bring in two Coils, and one Sweep. And that's my Vampire sideboard. No, I do want Sheltering Light. I guess yeah, I want that over Sprint, too. There we go. That was the other thing I did. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think, I think this deck could definitely have Blood Suns in the sideboard. Sorry, I was kind of rude there about the land destruction card, but yeah, don't don't play that over Blood Sun unless you're making a a budget de decision where you don't want to use wild cards on Blood Suns. But still, I'd rather just have Flame Sweeper Clarion instead of that card. Soul Farmer, there's no reason to be rude like that.
It's unnecessary. All right, we're going to hopefully draw our land this time. Didn't get the land last time. Hopefully get it here. First card to draw, Colossus. We already have one. Come on, land. Come on, deck, please draw land. One card down. Man, Flame Sweep would have been so great here. Just I'll take it. I'll take it. I don't, I don't know what's more consistent, Boros or Naya Feather. I'm not too, I'm not the most experienced Feather player. This is my first time playing Feather here. Uh, I like these kind of Feather decks. So I'd be. Um, all I can say is playing against them. Playing against them, I've always been very impressed by... I've uh, always been very impressed by the... Um, Naya version. I don't know why our opponent just paid four life with Vanguard. You mortals never learn. Long, long time. I bestow a mighty curse. Long, long, long time. It's a little unfortunate that we got to do this. Um, by flashing back. The. Uh, uh, this thing I would have just done. Three damage. You know, I could have basically done three and three. Uh, 
I probably don't need land number six. Down to eight. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta do this. Because if they have, if they have Legion's End, which we saw game one, that would be a problem. Yeah, I'm dead to Soren's plus one. That's true. They don't have Soren though. I think they're dead. Or they're close to dead. Hmm. Kind of do the do do you have a instant speed removal spell test? My favorite card of M twenty, I'd say, would be Vivian. Well, might as well go for it. Hope they don't have a removal spell. They do have the Vanguard that you know is going to make their their uh, time stop like all the time anyway. Oh, that's great. So 5 plus 12 is 17. Wait a minute. This isn't lethal, is it? Yeah, this is only 17. Yeah, I'm going to rage the Adanta Vanguard. Yeah, I'm going to be doing that. Oh, I can't Collision Colossus with the 3-5. Oh, could this thing, they count this as 4 mana? I guess I'm doing ambush then. Yeah, as long as they don't have a spell, I'm still fine. Just put him down to 
<clears throat> to one, but they don't have the Adanta Vanguard anymore. So we're good. Oh, that was his game too. Game's not over yet. All right, so yeah, good to know that uh, with the CMC that, that counts as four in the graveyard. No, I think Takali to to just stop Champion of Dusk from drawing is a little too narrow. I mean, honestly, maybe that's better than playing Colossus. No, Takali wouldn't do anything else against their deck. Doesn't doesn't do anything against Knight of the Oven Legion. Hey QQ. Happy weekend. Good strong start here for them. Well, that could definitely be game. So when they had Noxious Grasp, like we saw last game, we saw multiple Noxious Grasps last game. That's what I was hoping their removal spell was, where that doesn't kill Arcanist. But... It was not. And yeah, we did not draw another creature. Bleh. All right, three and two. I think our I think our vampire matchup seems it feels pretty fifty fifty. Um, you know, we won one against vampires, lost one. Uh, we have hands that, you know, like basically the games don't seem really close it's kind of like they run us over we run them over kind of thing uh, that's what it that's what it felt like with those games um but yeah i think if i would play this deck again i think i would get the blood suns in there i like that Flame Sweep wasn't super bad, but just maybe just like one, and then um, don't think I wanted Danto Vanguards in the sideboard. I think I'd take those out. And I also want one Devout Decree in the sideboard. There we go. That's all I would do to the sideboard. In the in the deck, the girl spellbreakers really didn't feel very good. I wonder if just Gideon is just going to be better than girl spellbreaker just in general. 
I'm not sure with that. Collision Colossus was was okay. I'm not sure if it's really a two of, maybe just a one of. Like maybe maybe the shelter the second sheltering light should be main instead of Colossus. You run Krenko in the three drop slot. Krenko is honestly kind of underrated. I don't mind playing Krenko. I really don't mind playing this card at all. It it has more potential to win games than Spellbreaker does, I think. It does, I guess it does mean you probably want to be playing more Colossus still. Just seems like Spellbreaker is just not really what this deck's about. I'm not sure I would want three Krenko, though. Uh, Blood Sun's much better than Alpine Moon. You like playing Thorn Lieutenant? I can see I can see Thorn Lieutenant holding doing good against removal and everything. I can see that. Yeah, like those are all interesting. You play Paradise Druids. That's not a bad one either. We were, we were definitely struggling with mana, uh, having enough mana at times. Or, I mean, there was some games where we just had too much mana, where it was just all mana. But yeah, Krenko with, yeah, Domri's Ambush, Sprint, Colossus. It's definitely very good with all those. It's pretty bad with Reckless Rage, of course, just to start with. But it's not bad with God's Willing, Sheltering Light also. Oh no, I'd try one Krenko over the Spellbreakers. I'd have a Krenko in here. And then, yeah, I could see playing Paradise Druid instead of these Spellbreakers. I could see playing Gideons instead of the Spellbreakers. Um, honestly, I could see playing this Ajani over the Spellbreakers. Honestly. Uh, get, get you know, your Arcanist and 10th District Legionnaire back or also put counters on these things. I'm not really sure why nobody plays this card in the deck. This card's probably pretty pretty great. I think what I would want to do is maybe play Gideon's main and then a Johnny sideboard, a Johnny for control, where you can minus and bring back a threat right away. I think I'd want to try that. Oh, that's awesome, Anomaly. Glad you're loving the new Vivian. So I don't know. Yo, know, I would I would want to try these um, these cards out. I think this is what I want to try next time. All right, there's Naya Feather. So if you're watching this video later on YouTube, hope you enjoyed it. And if so, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe buttons over there. I'd appreciate that. But thanks so much for watching Naya Feather, and I will see you for the next video.